This is Billionaire Mondays. Every Monday, we present you with another billionaire. Today, we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about Pavel Durov. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello, Aluxers, and welcome to another exciting original video presented by Alux.com. Today, we're revealing some interesting, lesser known facts about the man who is commonly referred to as the Mark Zuckerberg of Russia, Pavel Durov. Pavel Durov was born October 10, 1984, in Leningrad, Russia. In his short 33 years of life, he's accomplished what most Aluxers dream of, but it hasn't come without a cost. While he was studying language at the St. Petersburg State University, he was inspired to come up with his own social networking platform. With the help of his genius brother, Nikolai, he successfully launched the Vikontokte website in 2006. The social media platform quickly gained millions of followers and became the most visited website in Russia, and one of the most popular throughout Europe. However, Pavel became the target of Russian authorities after he refused to cooperate with them or make adjustments to the site according to their wishes. He was forced out of the company and went into a self-imposed exile in 2014. He's definitely landed on his feet, though, as he was quick to launch another multi-billion dollar idea, the Telegram Messenger, which is a controversial app that allows fully encrypted messaging and communication. We want to learn some more about Pavel because he's an intriguing billionaire who is known for his convictions, ambition, unique lifestyle, and influential business ideas. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. So, let's now take a closer look at this billionaire entrepreneur with the 15 things you didn't know about Pavel Durov. Number 1. Although he was born in St. Petersburg, Russia, he grew up in Italy. Pavel was born in Leningrad, which is now known as St. Petersburg, Russia, but he primarily grew up in Turin, Italy. His father, Valery Durov, worked in Italy for many years and now works as the head of the Department of Classical Philology at St. Petersburg University. Pavel lived in Italy with his family until he moved back to Russia when he was 17 years old. His brother, Nikolai, lived in Italy as well before becoming the two-time world champion in programming among students and later working as the technical director of VK. Number 2. He launched the largest European social network. When one of his friends who was studying in America showed him Facebook, Durov had the idea to start his own social network. In 2006, after graduating from St. Petersburg State University, he began beta testing Vikontakte, which is now known as VK. The site grew rapidly, with over 100,000 members by the beginning of 2007 and 1 million members by July 2007. Under Durov's direction, the site grew to have over 350 million members, and since his departure from the company, it's maintained its status as the largest European social network, with more than 477 million accounts. Number 3. An April Fool's joke resulted in him being dismissed as CEO. Durov submitted a resignation letter on April 1, 2014 to the board, saying he was leaving his post as CEO of VK, but two days later he said it was just an April Fool's Day joke. The board saw this as an opportunity though, and less than 20 days later ousted him as the CEO, claiming he had failed to withdraw his resignation letter even though he admittedly only submitted it as a joke. Durov was furious and blamed his dismissal on Vladimir Putin's political faction, claiming they were retaliating because he refused to divulge his users' personal information to federal law enforcement. He says he never plans on going back because Russia is incompatible with internet business. Number 4. His Telegram app has 200 million active users. After Telegram Messenger was launched in 2013, it reached 100,000 users in a matter of months, an especially impressive feat since Pavel did not engage in any marketing at all. By the end of 2014, they had reported having 50 million active users, with 1 billion messages sent daily. It was growing at a rate of about 1 million new users per week. By 2016, 15 billion messages were being sent daily, and as of 2018, the app has 200 million active users. Number 5. 
His net worth is $1.7 billion. Pavel was likely a multi-billionaire before he gave up a majority stake in VK, and when he was forced out of the company in 2014, he sold his 12% stake for around $300 million. He took $260 million with him when he fled Russia, and he used at least part of it to establish his new company. His current fortune is primarily attributed to him being the majority owner of his Telegram Messenger app, and his most recent net worth is $1.7 billion. Number 6. He was accused of hitting a police officer with his car. In April 2013, when Duroff was 28, he was investigated in a hit-and-run incident when he was identified as the driver of a white Mercedes that ignored orders and ran into a police officer in St. Petersburg. Durov strongly denied that he was involved in the incident and said that he doesn't own a car or even know how to drive. His home and the VK offices were searched, but Durov claimed it was a retaliation by the authorities for his unwillingness to cooperate with them on multiple occasions. Now, Durov reportedly always hires a driver, so he can never be accused of a hit and run ever again. Number 7. He was involved in a police standoff in 2011. In 2011, the police wanted to question him and have him reveal some encrypted information about some of his site's users who were seen as engaging in subversive actions against the government. Pavel ignored all requests and even posted about it on his VK page and taunted the authorities with a picture of a dog sticking its tongue out. A large police team showed up at his house and engaged in a standoff as they demanded he remove certain politicians' VK pages. Durov steadfastly refused and seriously considered fleeing Russia at that time. Number 8. His site was accused of being a hub for terrorists and anti-government protesters. In November 2013, there was a wave of protests in Ukraine after the government decided to forego an agreement with the European Union and instead strengthen the country's ties with Russia. Many of the protesters used VK to organize their activities and speak out against the Ukrainian and Russian governments. When authorities demanded they hand over the personal details of the protesters, he responded by posting the demands on his personal VK page with a claim that they were unlawful. Five days later, he was forced out of the company. Number 9. He attained St. Kitts and Nevis citizenship through a large donation. When Pavel fled Russia, he didn't necessarily know where to go, but he did have a whole lot of cash, which definitely made everything a whole lot easier. With no desire to ever return to Russia, he sought out a new form of citizenship, and he found it on the island nation of St. Kitts and Nevis, which is the smallest sovereign nation in the Western Hemisphere. All it took was a $250,000 donation to their Sugar Industry Diversification Foundation, and he was granted that citizenship. Number 10. He doesn't own any property. Sometimes the true sign of having money is not needing to put down roots anywhere. Pavel doesn't like to spend more than a few weeks in any given place. He bounces around from country to country, staying in expensive hotels and leaving whenever he wishes. He claims that he doesn't want to be rich, saying he had seen all the yachts, private jets and mansions in Russia and figured out that wasn't the life for him. And although he now spends most of his time in Dubai, he considers himself to be a legal citizen of the world. You should definitely check out our video, 15 Things You Didn't Know About Dubai, to see why a man who claims to not want the finer things in life might feel out of place there. Number 11. His police standoff gave him the idea for Telegram. Pavel said that when SWAT teams showed up at his house in 2011 to intimidate him and make demands about how he handled his business, he wanted to call his brother, but he realized there was no totally secure way he could do this. In the middle of this very stressful situation, he was inspired with the idea for his next company, Telegram Messenger. He launched the app in 2013 with his brother Nikolai. Nikolai handled the technology, while Pavel gave the necessary financial support. Number 12. Apple pulled his app out of their app store. There's also a dark side to Durov's Telegram app, since it does not filter out or discriminate among its users. This could be seen as a positive thing, but it also means that Telegram has become the preferred communication platform for terrorists, 
sex traffickers, child abusers, and other criminals. In February 2018, Apple made the decision to pull Telegram from their app store because it had been determined that child pornography was present on the app. Number 13. He spends $1 million a month to keep Telegram running. On the Telegram website, it's advertised that the platform will always be free to use and there'll never be any ads or subscription fees. So how do they intend to make their money? Well, apparently that's not the goal. Pavel paid for the development and the launch of the app himself, and it's estimated that he spends $1 million of his own money monthly to keep the service going. The website says if it ever becomes necessary, they will charge for extra non-essential services, but they also clearly state that profits will never be their end goal. Number 14. He caused a fight by throwing paper airplanes made of money out his window. In 2012, Durov caused a mini-riot when he and other VK executives made paper planes out of ruble notes, which were worth about $155 each, and flew them out of their window to be received by a crowd of people on the street. Some major fighting ensued as people tried to grab the airplanes, and some media reported that Pavel sat back and laughed at all the poor people on the street fighting over money. However, Pavel said he couldn't see the people from where he was sitting and stopped throwing the airplanes once he realized they were fighting. Number 15. His cryptocurrency has raised more than $1.7 billion in its ICO. Pavel has helped develop his own cryptocurrency and blockchain platform that will be used through his Telegram service. The blockchain platform is called the Telegram Open Network, or TON for short. It's positioned to be one of the biggest initial coin offerings to date, with $850 million raised in just the first round and a total of $1.7 billion raised so far in its initial coin offering, or ICO, as of April 2018. The ICO is still ongoing and is expected to surpass $2 billion. And there you have it, Aluxers, some interesting lesser-known facts about Pavel Durov. Now that you've learned some more about Durov, we'd like to know. Do you think the benefits of having a secure communication platform is worth the trade-off of also giving criminals, terrorists, and child abusers a secure avenue for private communication? Let us know what you think in the comments. Still here? Of course you are. Here's a bonus fact just for you. Number 16. He held a $300,000 contest to see if anyone could hack into Telegram. In 2015, Pavel held a contest for anyone who thought they could hack into Telegram's messaging platform to extract secret data that was passed between two virtual users in their secret chats function. He offered $300,000 as a reward, but nobody won the contest. To prove the contest was fair, they later published the encryption key for the conversation, and they intend to hold more contests in the future. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxer. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. If you want more, we handpicked these videos you might enjoy, or head over to alux.com for the best in fine living content on the planet. Be a part of the largest community of luxury enthusiasts in the world and tell your story.